talk about your major? Like, what was your major? How is it like? What was the curriculum? What What would you say to someone who's interested to come in to study that major at UAB? Um, what What can you say now after you've graduated from that department? So my major was. And what's the tuition um, for the master's program for your major as well? Let me see. As an international student, I think the cost of my education was. Let's see, every semester, every semester was like $8,000. I'm not even talking to classrooms or anything, but let's say eight k ish If you take online courses, your situation can drop to like maybe 7 k So it was like eight, between 8, 9 k So just imagine 18 k a year, 18 k a year. I want to say that for if you're strictly in class. So I want to say at the end of the day, you come down to 30 something K for the two years. So is my that curriculum- That's like excluding the living expenses. Yeah, excluding, if you want to add living expenses, uh, we're going to be going up to 40 K of which my living expenses were my burden to bear, you know? I wouldn't, yeah, they were quite different. I would say with living expenses, it just depends. So how much can you tell someone to plan for like your living expenses um, for a month and then multiply that by 12 months and then for the two years? So we can have a sum up, you know, um, fee for anybody coming for their major in particular. I want to say rent. I had a roommate, so rent was like maybe 500 and something. So you're going to do 500 times 12 for one year basic 500 times 12 in fact i don't say 550 because electricity bills 550 times 12 that's a different thing so let's just say you should have like 10k for rent in a year let's say you have 10k or, mm. five that'll be five thousand yeah I, I want to say like if you're living by yourself i don't say thank you but if you have your roommate i don't say you should have about five to six k for a year so we're talking 12k for two years now living expenses 12k and then if you add that living expenses i'm not adding groceries now if i want to add groceries now i would be doing 100 dollars a month which would be like 1k a year so now we're going up to 7k so max i want to say 7k 14k for two years 14k plus 35,000 ish. So that's pretty much like 50K for both the tuition. Yeah, let's let's say, let's say 50K. Let's say 50K. Yeah, roughly 50K. It could be cheaper when you come and you slash a lot of things, you take online classes and some semesters, you find a cheaper place to live, you find a three bed. There are a lot of things that could actually bring your things, your expenses, your living expenses down. So so how about the major itself, um, the curriculum, the courses, how, what are the courses like, are they would, ranging, yeah. how are your professors, how did they handle the course, so how can you review, what's even your major, is it masters in communications, right? So I did masters in communication management and business, so I should say I'm business because I did um, MBA programs and stuff like with my degree just to make sure that I still stay like in my field of business. So it's like communication management, first of all, it's not like your regular mass comm or whatever you hear about. It's like a managerial program where people who want like to level up in their career, they want a position of leadership. So I had a lot of people that were managers in my program coming to do that program. And I would say literally any anybody can do the program, but you just have to be ready to, it's a lot of reading, a lot of writing, reading, writing, reading, writing, research. So I would say you, anybody can do the program. The reason I'm saying anybody can do the program, you just have to be committed to do the work. I would say my professors were disciplined. They would give you, they were good. I had good professors teach me and there were a lot of practical aspects of some of the programs I took where we had to go out. I know there was this time I, called, I did like a, an ethnography. I visited Tennessee to do a particular research for a day. I went to see these people. 
they call them the who are this class of people that they segregate themselves from the rest of the world? The Amish, the Amish community, yes. There was a program I did with the Amish. There was one I did where I studied like Japanese churches, a lot of things. And there were programs where I took like, so looking at the MBA aspect, so not everybody would merge that program with like MBA. It was a personal decision of mine to remain a business major to, for my career goal. So you need to know what your career goal is to structure your program in that light. I probably could have switched entirely to an MBA program, but when I realized it was late. So my best bet was like merging the two together and switching my, and telling my professor like, hey, I'm going to have to be taking classes here because I knew what my goal was. And I, I, when I saw the way things were going, I knew like, if you're not careful, you might end up just taking the core courses that might not favor the goals that you have. So I would say the curriculum is good, but to be honest, master's curriculums, they could use some work. A lot of master's curriculum could use some work okay. to prepare you for jobs yeah. out there. I there are certification you. programs that we are not told about, especially as internationals that are paying thousands of dollars. You need to know about certification. So if you're looking to be a project manager, if you need to be in the field of business, people need to start telling you about certifications mm -hmm. like, have you talked about writing PMP? Have you talked about writing, um, like as a master's person, your, your core courses are not enough. Because when you start looking for this job, some people are telling you, do you have hands-on training here? Yes. Do you have hands-on, do you have this certification? Do you, have, you published, have you published papers? So if you want to be in academia, that's a different goal. But I will say that curriculums are not enough. My curriculum was not perfect. It's, I think it's okay for the average person. Because if you tell your lecturers that I want more, they might even say, oh yeah, come and write paper. But that's not even in the curriculum. Yes. There's thesis in my program. But the thesis route, because UAB is a medical inclined school, they make the thesis route very difficult because there's a lot of, if you're going to use human beings for research, there's a lot of process for you to do this. So my, 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 my um, advisor would always say, everybody do the comprehensive exam so that I can graduate on time. Because when you start filing IRB, that's the research body, submitting your questionnaire, doing all these things is worse than doing projects in Nigeria. Because not because the system is quite tough. They want to screen everything you're going to do because you're going to be asking human beings questions. They want to make sure you're not using identifiers. They're just so many, and it's a hassle. But if you have a goal to go to PhD or to be in the academia, you need to do that thesis. You need to publish paper. So when you ask me about curriculum, I would say it's very relative. It's fair, it's good, standard. But what is your goal? Your goal goes a long way to telling you that you have the perfect curriculum. That's what I would say. So like I said, this has been a journey of self-discovery. So for me, when I realized what my goal was, in this program, when I realized that, oh, well, this is not basic talk show, anything that I'm not just, I'm not looking for just mere communications. Like I, I still see my passion. I still, when I started in classes in the School of Business, I understood and I, I, I we started working on developing startups and um, entrepreneurship, business ideas, scaling ideas, doing a lot of research, learning about like possibility of building softwares for business ideas, competing for money. Like when I started seeing all this other side, I realized that Omo, this is where I'd rather be. So let me just take more classes in this line. Do you get? So at the end of the day, I didn't even, the average person from my own system would not take the courses that I, I took. Like I said, if you know your goal, talk to your advisor and structure your program there. My advisor told me that because like MBA courses are like, you know, wow, they are like quite tough. So he told me that, are you sure you want to take those classes? Because if you get a C, we're not taking you, like you're going to retake those courses. I'm like, well, we'll be all right. My life has been a risk, I will take it. So that's when I like, I really started going hard. I joined, um, I even went ahead to do a program where we had to like, developed like a whole glass recycling company thing, which is like with another team of students. And that was like in the bit when I understood like what my career goal was and where my passion lied. So I would say like curriculum will always be there, but trust me, these people are flexible. 
they are flexible, so they will structure you to, this is who I want to be, this is where I want, I'm not satisfied, if you like, cry, do whatever you can and tell them, so sometimes if they're not, if they, if they can't offer you the best, they recommend who can offer you what you're looking for, worst case, if they see that the school is not working out for you, they can say, you can transfer to this school, I'm not even gonna lie, like, no hard feelings, if we can't give you what you want, your best option might be to transfer, so, that was just that was it for me. Really, so that's if what I was. Everyone is watching this and you're like, this is very. I mean, like, if you're not jotting things down, I don't know why you're here because Amara is feeling so much. Like, these are things nobody would tell you before you even jump on taking any master's or graduate program here. You only get to discover them maybe in your second. When you year. get here, you see a curriculum. You think you think the program you were coming to is what you actually want. And then when you now get there, there was nothing wrong with my program. You now realize that the goals I'm hitting, even as an international student, the standards are higher for you. If people are doing 100, you have to do 200%. It's, it's, it's an unspoken rule. Wisdom, just apply wisdom. It's just there. Because if you want to get ahead of the game, they will, people cons they consider their citizens, they consider other things. Like this right. is a whole different topic that's why you have to do 200 percent so that they will look back and see who is that one why is she why where is she running to you know so it's all about what you want and to be honest if i i would say that if i knew what i knew now i would have taken a proper structure before moving like right now i'm planning to write some certifications see now at this point i still need these certifications now you just have masters. You don't even have the actual certifications you need to hack into some industries. But like I said, it's a journey. So by the time you find out, you have some L's, you have some wins, but you will find out. But I'll just say, do your research well. What is your goal with this masters? What do you want to do with it? Why do you want a PhD? Are you trying to be in the academia? Can you actually be in the industry without that masters? Would you need a certificate rather? And if you must do the masters, how can you, get into the industry how do you get your foot in the door to the industry that you want to these are questions you ask yourself in your first semester don't this in your second year in your first semester it's really go a long way so yeah so, um for someone that would come here for this program what certifications would you advise them to take because you're like i said you have certificates whether it's related to the business side or even to the communication side what are the options so I would say like with the communication side, um, let's see. With the communication side, I would say, first of all, you need a lot of papers. If you're going to be in the academia, if you want to teach, you need to publish papers. You need to join the communication body as a student. It's called the AC, uh, ASC communication. I need to find that group or you need to you join the- yeah, I will add it later, but I need to find the group. Then you join that group. It will help you a lot, connect with people, know what they're doing. So also there's, let's see, for, for then if you're looking to just be a manager, to just level up in your career, say you're in the, your head of communications or something in your company, you're just looking to level up. I would say take more managerial courses more like take the organizational communication class try to get an mba um a couple of mba classes probably in social media um strategy to help you as a leader combining that with communications will really help you for a managerial um position because now as a manager you're thinking strategy you're thinking leadership so persuasion was a very good class that I took, the persuasion um, class. It would teach you how to persuade people. And I'm talking about people with look like mess stuff. Like this stuff is deep. And thanks to Dr. Levan, we're able to understand it. All these ads that you see. So if you're in, in, in advertising and you want to level up your degree with communication management, it's good. So when you think about all these ads that, we, that you see on TV, say they're doing ad about smoking, they will show you an accident prior to telling you about maybe alcohol or smoking. There's a lot of theory. There's a lot of body work that goes into that. And that's what that class kind of teaches. It teaches you like ads that deal with fear appeal, a lot of other things. I can't remember all of them, 
Yeah, so what, what was I? What we're was... All the certifications, we're getting to the point. I was, saying that I was talking based on career goals. So if you're in advertising, your career goal is different. You, you curate, you take classes. Like I didn't take political communication because I have no business with politics. I like to know about politics. I, I want to be more informed, but I just felt like that has nothing to do with where I'm going. So I didn't take that class. So like I said, know where you're going. It's unfold gradually. So if you want to work in tech and you're in communication management, you need to start blending your courses with some courses in school of business that will get you there. You might want to take a data analysis, um, data science class. Because at the end of the day, you sell yourself and say, oh, I'm well, you take some, you take a class in Google Analytics, get certified in, um, say, you want to do, say, for example, what are the certifications now that you can get for tech? So now data analytics is something that you can take to pursue that side. So now you're coming correct. You're telling them that, hey, I have a master's in communication management. I also have some certifications as well that will help me tilt my career this way. So if you see where I'm coming from, it depends on what your goal is. So I realized some things late. And I just started organizing myself. So right now I'm looking at the supply chain field and project management. So those are the certifications I still have to write while having this degree, right? To get into those, to hack into those fields, because these are fields that without that PMP, they will still be looking at you as if you're joking. Without your supply chain certification, you might not be able to get into some fields. So is it supply chain related to um the communication management so the reason why i talked about this is this career goal so supply chain is like a business like i said i'm a business major my first degree was in marketing so i'm just saying like as time goes on you just keep growing and you just keep gaining interest in like so i took a lot of classes in like like i said mba so i did like an operations and supply chain um, mba yes. yes so that was one of the things then i also did a program whereby i helped build like a startup we were competing for money. It was a program that was organized by School of Business. And there was a lot of operations around that um, program where we had to do a lot of recycling. So the goal was to build a recycling plant for Birmingham, Alabama, glass recycling. So there's a lot of operations going on. I worked with like engineering, someone in architecture, and someone in materials. So like, I see at the end of the day, I'm still moving towards business oriented things and is less of communication and still more business oriented. So you see how like my, how things are changing. Yeah. And originally I'm a business major. So it's more like <laughs> you're still coming back to where you started at the end of the day. So supply chain is like a field in business, more or less, it's not a field in communication, it's a field in business. It's an industry. So it's a supply chain industry. I mean, there will be a communications person, you're not the key person. I mean, that could be a skill to have, but you're not a key person. So it's just an industry that I'm interested in, I'm trying to pursue it. So I'm just saying, because you ask like, what are the certifications that, so I'm saying based on your goal, if you're coming from advertising, if you're coming from mass com, if you're coming from business, what is your career goal? Structure your curriculum that way. Your school already has something set, but you need to say, this is where I want to see myself going. I don't want to lose touch with this field, or gain more with this field? How can I balance it? Talk to someone. Sometimes it's, a, sometimes it's something you just have to fix on your own. Nobody needs to tell you, do you get? So, so how did you handle the pandemic? Um, hmm. Your final year graduating and dealing with all of that. Okay. So I would say the pandemic was hard. Um, I'm not even going to say much about that, but it was just hard. The biggest thing is that it was hard. There was a lot of hiding for me, like hiding because I hadn't faced something like that before. And this was not a plan. I was supposed to be happy. I was supposed to be celebrating, walking down the stage. My family was supposed to come to my graduation. It was supposed to be a happy time for me. And next thing we're in a pandemic, next thing I'm I'm not even going to graduate. On my graduation day, I was really sad. I went to Walmart that day and I couldn't even watch it because I'm like, what, what, what? I paid what for this? Like, no. 
see me. So the pandemic was hard, but I had to scale through. I, what I did was how do I still stay relevant even after I graduated? Because it messed with my head, messed with my mind a lot. So I, I started taking some classes on Udemy. I was applying for jobs. I was networking. Every time I was in one meeting or the other or interviewing for jobs, I just didn't give up. I would say, but it was really hard. I must specify. I can't, if I talk about the details, it would just be too long. But I would say it was really, really hard. It was, it was hard. I, the fact that I survived the pandemic, I'm still shook. I'm still shook, like mentally, physically, like it was, it was hard. It was something about where I learned a lot about mental health and maintaining sanity. I, re, I saw my working out coming in handy to keep me sane. Support system kept me sane, reminding me that the fact that we're in a pandemic does not reduce how valuable you are, but you just have to find a way to make a way for yourself. Everybody will say, I had to respect a lot of my mental health. I took a lot of social media breaks to focus because the news was bad, the physical was bad. What what's exactly was good about existing, yeah. being alive at that time? That's when I was like, so World War, how do you feel like during the war? <laughs> So now I have a story to tell my children that I was jobless after graduation. It was just a mess, you know. But if there's something I learned, it was just pulling through that resilient spirit of we can't give up, we've come too far. I remember my dad would send me encouraging messages like stay strong, stay well. And he told me that it was comes to us if we have to come back, not to worry. Because I told him that. At some point, I told him that, nah, I'm trying. This wasn't the plan. I had a lot of interviews. Some people didn't follow up with me. I said this wasn't the plan. And he said he understands. I mean, I knew he expected more from me, like, you know, after all the investments. Well, I was too disappointed in myself, in the pandemic, in everything. And I had a lot of questions that are still an answer to today but if there's something i learned was just there's so much that we can control there's only so much we can control and for the first time if you know me i'm always trying to be busy i'm always trying to do something i'm used to doing something so even when, even when a shift happens i will try to be busy to cover up that shift but in this time my business could not save me i was moving mad it was like my works could not save me. I couldn't do much. All I was just hearing was, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, referrals, take this, do that, do this. Nobody in the world could help you because everybody is still trying to find out what this thing is. And I wasn't even in the best of situations at the time because it wasn't just a pandemic. It was a lot of emotional situation, like you just graduated. I also visited family in 2019. Yeah, I remember. So a lot of things were just happening. And I was just like, oh my God, I didn't decide to start my year like this. I lost friends. I had to deal with death. I, I, had, to, I had to support people that I never knew how to support. I was exposed to pain. It was crazy. But I just kept on moving. I just kept on going. And I'm sure like <laughs> people knew, but they would know no, because everybody's going through the same thing, right? So it was a lot of... on learning and relearning. A lot of times I hid under Netflix. Like I hid under Netflix. I'll watch Grey's Anatomy back to back. Come ring, come something, I'll just be there. And then some days I'm interviewing because I didn't want to face what was going on. And then it was like, every time there was like, I had like unending sore throats, like something like blocking here. And then I could not just, my mom didn't even like calling me because she just felt like I was so discouraging to talk to because I told her that I'll see you, my mom, I cannot lie to you. I'm not fine. I'm not fine. That's that's on period. Like, can we can we accept that your perfect the magic can not be fine? The one who would encourage you not be fine. Can we like talk about that? So yeah. But other than that, um a lot of shock. That was a different level of shock. Where men, but I would say that eventually I was able to get like a contract offer and 
I had to leave Alabama. I didn't even know what the contract offer had in stock for me because I was not so excited. It wasn't like the best thing I wanted, but I just knew that if there was something I learned in pandemic, it was keep moving. And then sometimes you have to stay afloat. I saw a tweet on Twitter that I like to talk about. The person said, I'm tired of singing Oceans. You know the Ocean song? Um, Spread lead me when my uh, something, something. Yes. Let me walk on water. Yes wherever you will call me, let my feet not feel, lead me so my feet will not feel. She said, every time she's singing oceans, oceans, that can we actually accept that she doesn't want to do crazy feats, that she's actually tired. And I could relate. Because okay. similarly, I also learned something in the pandemic, Love you, Ajayi, I'm referencing her again, because she said that she was talking to her therapist and she's like, she's used to doing things. But this pandemic is as if she's swimming, she's trying so hard to swim. And, and her therapist said, what if you stay afloat? What if you just stay afloat? Like she's not telling you to drown, but sing. Can you just float? Have you, do you try? I, I'm, I'm not the best person that floats, but if you try floating, it's more like you're resting your arms because you're swimming consistently. Your arms are pinging and there's so much that you can do. So that's why, that's why floating is necessary sometimes. And it hits me. I'm like, man, I'm trying so hard to swim. I don't want to be resting because everybody is well, using the pandemic as an excuse because I have a timeline. I have to get a job. I have to progress. I have to do so many things. I'm not used to my life being on pause. I'm used to doing what's next, going, going, going. And I just like to stay afloat and accept the fact that I can't control what's happening. But in the meantime, what can I control? And I think I eventually launched out my YouTube channel <laughs> in August when the worst, during the worst times, I launched out my YouTube channel. I was trying to be there for family. I was trying to support other people. Like my own case was good, but I just felt like, what can I control? I can control helping others. I can control being there for people. I can control exploring other things that I need that I didn't have time to explore. So that's why I just started doing. That was how I survived the pandemic. Yes. So I just shifted the things I could not control and channeled my anything that I control. So starting my YouTube channel that I forever said I was starting and getting to the country, every other thing, I just started doing them. And it was therapy for me and I learned to stay afloat. So when it doesn't work out, I'll just sleep, call a friend, talk, just cook. Yeah, cook. Invest a lot in my cooking. <laughs> do my videos i started putting out more content and it was just nice because those were the things i could control at the time but did i cry yes i cried i'm not even gonna lie crying is therapy for me i know like my contract of what was supposed to start in october and they moved it to november that day i screamed i screamed and tears just rolled down my eyes like i was so mad i'm like how long where well, yeah. How, it was worth it. Yeah. How were you able to stay and uh, maintain your visa status knowing that you, we have, as internationals, we have deadlines, the nine oh, yeah. deadline. That's a great that question. One. So one thing I did for that was I enrolled in Blazer Kitchen. So Blazer Kitchen, I started being like the social media person. I know I did a live with Precious, shout out to Precious, the I know she has graduated now. She's like what she's doing big things. So I I reached out, like I said, I'm actually always reach out, even if it sounds stupid. I reached out to my um, ISS um, director and I asked him, hey, my job's supposed to start at this time. What do I do in the meantime? Do I just put my start dates and say they move? Like, what do I do? He said, find a volunteer thing. So I realized that when I came to this country earlier, I didn't talk about the fact that I volunteered before I got a real job. And it was Blazer Kitchen I volunteered in. They, are, they strive to provide for the community in Birmingham and Alabama. It's like a food bank. They do a lot of growing fresh produce, helping people stay out of hunger and drive and drastically reduce down the hunger rate. So they give you a lot of free food. And that's one of the things that I did in this country when I first came. And I also got free food from them to survive in the meantime. I'm never gonna lie. Like, it's it part of my business. Like, I mean, they have everything. That they have a lot of things, but yeah. one thing that you have to be conscious of is that some things might expire. So 
try to grab things when they just deliver things and when they are fresh. But then after a while, I stopped using them because I felt like I had grown to a point where I didn't need it and other people would need it more and appreciate it more. So I stopped using them. So, so picking back on that, so I went to volunteer with them. I reached out to my, um, I did an internship as well, a free internship. And that's another way of building connections. Offer yourself for free to people. So I did a free internship and I, and when the pandemic hit, I couldn't continue with them. The Blazer Kitchen. No, not at the Blazer Kitchen. This was with the Medical Association, Alumni Association. That's where I met um, one of my good friends that I know I could reach out to and she could write me a recommendation. I, it didn't pay me, it was for free. And um, I reached out to her, I said, hey, I'm in a pandemic, I need to work. And I need to, where can I volunteer? Can I still volunteer with y'all? And I used to volunteer in the office, so they didn't have a work from home situation. So they said, why don't you go back to, they, co- they recommended me to the Blazer Kitchen that, hey, this is what I'm good at and I can do it for them. So that's how I went back there and started working. I used it to upload my status in the meantime. So you went to, did you apply directly to like- I didn't, I didn't have to apply, so it's volunteer. So you have to just send an email, pick shifts, pick your hours. I took their, so because of my special social media interest and like creativity, I took their social media handle and started to handle their account. So that was another thing I did. So I would post regularly for them, talk about the fresh produce, let people, you know, disseminate information, do all those planning and stuff. And that's where I hosted the, my first live on their Instagram page where I talked about healthy living, meal prep, and all of that. So how so, long did you volunteer with them? Um, I would say like two, maybe close to two months. Let me see. Close to two months before, I, yeah. Before you moved for the contract position. So now, how has that journey been for you? I think before we even get to that point, let's talk about landing a job. Life after graduation, landing a job. And- Thank you.